Blades of Wolfsbane by John Cronshaw, a Ravenglass Legends prequel. It is evident that the Wyverns, blessed with a power to sway and govern the thoughts of mortal beings, doth hold sway over the affairs of men. The extent to which their influence hath moulded our past remains shrouded in mystery, and it may be by the grace of divine providence that humanity hath not yet purged them from our lands. A Discourse on Wyvernkind Chapter 1 Ragnar Wolfsbane stood in the shadow of Mirand Castle and gripped a blunted iron short sword and battered pine shield, sweating, dirty, aching, and bloody. He gazed across the training ground as the older boy's shield walls clashed. Swords, axes, and spears collided, bringing with them the clatter of oak and steel. Many of the lads would come away with scars and bruises, but creation blessed those who fought proud and true. Ragnar longed to join them, to show his prowess to his fellow warriors, young men who one day he would lead. But living only twelve summers, it would be two more years before he was allowed to train in the shield wall. His uncle Olaf marched before Ragnar and the younger boys. A seasoned veteran and master at arms, Olaf drew a hand down his braided beard and eyed each boy in turn. Leather straps crossed his chest, securing his greatsword across his back while fur leggings clad his thighs. He wore a light tunic, leaving his arms bare to the shoulder as dozens of silver killbands jangled on his forearms. He stopped before Ragnar and glared. You think you should get special treatment because you're the chief's son? Ragnar's gaze drifted to the ground. No, uncle. No, sir. No, sir. Beside him, Sven sniggered. Olaf turned to face the older boy. Something funny? No, sir, Sven barked his voice the deep baritone of a man near grown. By summer, he would join the older warriors to train in the shield wall. He was everything a mirand warrior should be. Strong and fast, lean and muscular. Blonde hair held back with a leather thong hung thick down his back. He stood with his feet planted firm on the packed dirt, his left hand gripping a large round shield, polished oak covered in leather and bound in iron, his right hand wielding a dulled steel longsword. Olaf clapped his hands and signalled for Ragnar and Sven to pair up. Fight! Ragnar adjusted his helmet and took a deep breath. Though Sven had the height and reach advantage, Ragnar could outrun him. Though running would do him no good here. He did not want to end up staring at the clouds again or worse, having his wounds stitched in the infirmary. Shifting into a ready stance, Ragnar held his shield out before him and circled Sven in a broad arc. With a smirk, Sven shot forward his sword clashing with Ragnar's shield. Ragnar staggered back, a jolt of pain numbing his arm. He gritted his teeth, his breaths coming out long and deep. He swung and missed, the shield feeling much heavier than it did moments before. Sven circled Ragnar, his smirk turning to a wolfish grin as he tossed his shield aside and gripped his sword with both hands. He bashed Ragnar's shield, once, twice, each strike bringing with it an explosive crack. A flash of white filled Ragnar's vision. He righted his helmet and stumbled back. With each of Sven's strikes he tried to block, tried to parry, tried to counter. But it was no good. Sven was too fast, too tall, too strong. He ignored the other boy's laughter, ignored Sven's taunts. If he could get one good hit in, he could return to his bed with his head held high. But the swings were relentless. Ragnar dropped to one knee, his shield held up to protect his head his sword flailing wildly. Hide behind your shield like a girl. Sven punctuated each word with a sword strike. Using all his strength to keep his shield in place, Ragnar clenched his jaw and rose to his feet. He parried and shoved Sven back. His biceps squeezed and ached. Blows rained down on his shield. He hoped Sven would tire himself out. With a jolt, Sven yanked the rim of Ragnar's shield, tearing it from his grip. His head rocked with the force of Sven's pummel. He followed his shield to the ground and lay sprawled in the muck, dirty puddle water soaking his clothes. Sven stood over him and shook his head. You will never be my chieftain. Scrambling to his feet, Ragnar spun to face him as his uncle and the other boys watched. He could act like a child or act like a man. He held out a hand to Sven. Good sparring. You're going to make a fine warrior. Sven spat on the ground and stepped back into line with the other boys. Ragnar picked up his shield and nodded to himself. Sven was bigger and stronger. 
but one day his lack of honor would be his undoing. Trying not to show the pain in his shield arm, he fell back into line between his friends Kest and Harold, and stared across the headlands to the Braun Sea. Let this be a lesson to you all, Olaf said. There will always be someone faster or stronger, larger or better trained. He rubbed the gnarled scar running down his left cheek. But not everyone is born with the heart of a warrior. He shook his head and sniffed. Now, be off with you. Ragnar let out a breath and strode towards Kest. Ragnar, you stay. Ragnar turned to his uncle and held in a sigh. Yes, sir. A group of lads joined Sven's side, slapping his back and sharing jokes Ragnar couldn't make out. Come, sit. Olaf sat on a log at the edge of the training ground and patted a space to his right. Ragnar sat beside his uncle and rested his elbows on his knees. What is it? When your father and I were your age, we had already mastered the axe and sword, the mace and bow. He turned to Ragnar. I could have beaten Sven at half your age and not broken a sweat. Ragnar gazed down at his trembling hands. You could have bested a boy of fourteen when you were six. He glared at Ragnar then shook his head. I tell you these things not to belittle you, but to make you realize you will never be a true warrior. His voice hardened. Go home and become a cook, or tend to the birds or the dogs. Something useful. But don't waste your time thinking you're a warrior because you're not, and you never will be. That's not fair. Yeah? Olaf rose slowly to his feet, his lip curling. Well, life's not fair. The sooner you learn that, and stop wasting my time the better. He waved a hand and marched away from Ragnar, leaving him alone. Ragnar let out a sigh and stared across the waves at the gauzy horizon for a long time. Ragnar, Kest's voice cut across the empty training ground. A slender lad with a mane of black hair jogged over to Ragnar. He slumped down on the log beside him. You hurt? Ragnar tried not to glare at his friend. What do you think? You know Sven's just a massive asshole, right? True, but he still manages to beat me every time. Yeah, but one day you'll be his chieftain, and then you can make him clean the kennels, or dance like a chicken or whatever. Exile him and his family, more like. Exile's a bit harsh. I mean, yes, he's from a long line of massive assholes. In fact, they're such massive assholes, I'm surprised they can walk around without crapping themselves. Ragnar snorted out a laugh. Just ignore him and be glad you don't have a nose like a raven. And I don't just mean a raven's beak, I'm talking the beak, the body, the feet, the wings, the tail. Ragnar laughed again. I always thought it looked like someone strapped an axe head to his face. Rag, I'm serious. Kest met his gaze. Imagine if you had to live like that. Not only are you a massive asshole, but you've also got that nose. You'd be pissed off too. You're right. It'll just be the kennels then. Or even better, have him see to the ravens. He raised a forefinger and grinned. They'd take one look at that stupid nose of his and see him as one of their own. Sven, chief of ravens. And assholes. He clapped a hand down on Ragnar's shoulder and got to his feet. Come on, let's get you cleaned up. Harold said there's a travelling company here from Sishin. He rubbed his hands together. Some of their women. Ragnar rocked to his feet and headed back to the castle. Chapter 2 Smoke, noise and heat filled the mead hall. Men sat across from each other at long tables, tearing into roasted boar and sharing war stories. Ragnar's father, Ragnar the Elder, sat at the head of the top table, watching over the proceedings with an amused eye. His raven glass warhammer hung behind him on the wall, a midnight presence twisting the surrounding light. Ragnar sat to his father's left and sipped ale from a cup. At the next seat, his younger sister, Maya, dropped a few chunks of meat to one of the dogs sniffing around the freshly strewn rushes. Heads turned as the doors flew open, and drummers dressed in fine silks played in time with tall stringed instruments Ragnar could not name. A trio of women, wearing only fine strips of shimmering blue fabric, flipped and cartwheeled between the tables. One of the women somersaulted over the brazier, her skin and clothes remaining untouched by the flames. The men clapped and cheered and slammed their cups in time with the music. Ragnar's cheeks burned as a group of dancers cavorted before his father. Acrobats performed feats of balance and daring, sometimes three of them standing on top of each other. In other corners, scantily clad women danced, 
their arms and legs as bare as their stomachs. A glance at his father told Ragnar all he needed to know about his feelings for these women. The hunger in his eyes, the way his tongue glided across his lower lip. Maya giggled when a young man plucked a coin from behind her ear. She turned to Ragnar and thrust the glinting silver towards him. Look, a magic coin. He smiled at her. Amazing. Having survived ten summers, Maya's looks reminded him of his mother before the blight took her beauty, and then her life. Maya shared the same blonde hair, high cheekbones and icy blue eyes of all wolfsbanes. She wore a dove grey woolen dress, paired with brown boots of soft leather. The family sigil of a wolf's head and spear adorned her chest. A pair of women drew Ragnar's attention. They danced with a short sword and dagger. But this was no dance. This was a display of swordcraft. They moved like eddying water, twirling and spinning, their blades clashing from unpredictable angles. He focused on their movements, the way their bodies seemed at one with the blades, and tried to copy the forms. A hard smack to the back of his head shook his attention from the women. He whirled to meet his father's glare. Don't mock them, boy. I... I wasn't. They're amazing. His father narrowed his eyes. That's not fighting, boy, that's just a pretty dance. But they're so fast. Wars are fought and won in the shield wall. The mark of a true warrior is his strength. These women are nothing more than dancers. There are no shortcuts to becoming a warrior. It takes hard work and training. Olaf told me what happened today being beaten by Sven. It is embarrassing, boy. You bring shame on the Wolfsbane name. By losing to someone older and bigger than me? By losing at all. His father's booming voice brought silence to the hall. The dancers huddled together and gazed at the floor. To be chieftain, you need to earn the respect of your warriors. He jabbed a forefinger at Ragnar. If you are weak, no one will follow you. He jerked a thumb behind him. Dancing like a woman is no way for a warrior to behave. Ragnar dipped his head. Yes, father. Ragnar the Elder drained his goblet and eyed his men. There will be a tournament, a competition to see who is the best among the boys. He turned to his son. I don't think you should enter. I'd hate for you to embarrass me. Again. Without another word, Ragnar the Elder turned and marched outside, leaving his son to stand before the silent hall, his cheeks burning. Chapter 3 the following day, Ragnar sparred with Kest, the sun beating down on their heads. With Olaf away teaching the shield wall, Ragnar glanced over his shoulder and picked a blunted short sword and foot-long dagger from the rack. Kest shrugged and dropped into a fighting stance, his sword and shield held at the ready. You know if Olaf sees you with that, he'll give you a smack around the head. Ragnar tested the sword's balance in his right hand and began to circle his opponent. He won't be saying that when I take the heads of our enemies. Kest lunged forward, thrusting his sword at Ragnar's chest. Ragnar ducked to the right, swung the sword, and struck Kest's shield. Kest parried Ragnar's dagger and slammed into him, hurling Ragnar to the ground. See, you need a shield. If you piss around with fancy stuff, I'm just going to knock you down. He pulled Ragnar to his feet. I just need practice. Kest rolled his eyes. If you want to end up in the dirt again, be my guest. Ragnar glanced down at the blades and recalled the women using the daggers as their primary weapon, with the sword in their off hand. Let me try swapping them. It's not going to help, Kest said, starting to circle. You can yield now if you want to avoid more embarrassment. Piss off. Ragnar adjusted his stance and thought of his short sword more as a shield than a weapon. Kest swung first, bringing his sword down in a vertical slash. Ragnar parried with his dagger and beat against the shield with his sword. He thrust the dagger forward, reaching through Kest's guard and making contact with his chest. Lucky shot. Kest grinned and shook his head. I'm going to have to watch you. Ragnar fixed his gaze. You can try. Ragnar Wolfsbane scores one good hit, and suddenly he's a bloody hero. He leapt forward, his sword coming down. Ragnar jumped back and swept Kest's feet with his sword, sending him to the dirt. He stood over his friend and smiled. I make that two good hits. He yanked Kest to his feet. You ready? Always. Kest held up his shield and crab walked on bent knees. He emerged from behind his shield to lash at Ragnar. Iron clashed against iron and Ragnar's dagger spun through the air. He went as if to reach for it, whirled, 
and scored another hit against Kest's chest. That's three, Kest laughed and wiped a bead of sweat from his forehead. Getting tired? Me? I'm fine. At least I can keep hold of my weapon. You sure you're not ready to yield? I've not started yet. Kest raised his shield. I'm just getting warmed up. You're sweating. I'd say you're already warmed up. Kest charged forward, slammed into Ragnar, and jabbed the sword point against his chest. Ragnar looked down and pushed out his bottom lip. Very good. He stepped back. You ready? Kest gave the nod. Ragnar roared and ran shoulder first into Kest's shield. He slashed with his dagger and frowned when Kest's sword pressed against his throat. Crap. That's what you call warrior skill, that is, Kest said. I saw you coming. You left yourself open and that little growl of yours wouldn't scare a pup. Do you remember when I told you to piss off earlier? Yeah, so. So, it still stands. Piss off. You're getting wound up, aren't you? Kest began to circle again. You're getting riled. Ragnar licked the dryness from his lips and watched Kest's eyes. You're wrong. He fainted with his sword, bringing Kest's shield across, then thrust at his exposed arm with his dagger. Kest hopped back and cursed. Now who's getting riled? I'm not. You are, Ragnar said. I can see it in your eyes. You're going to cry, aren't you? You're going to run back to your mother's aprons, aren't you? Now it's your turn to piss off. Ragnar pushed out his chin, goading him to strike. He shifted back at Kest's slash. Ooh. Nearly. He blocked Kest's sword with his own and winced at the force. Kest pushed forward, slicing the air and batting Ragnar's dagger back with his shield. Ragnar charged at him, slamming his shoulder into the shield and thrusting out with his dagger. The blade connected with Kest's throat. Panting, Kest nodded to his own sword, its tip resting against Ragnar's groin. And now we're both dead. He removed his sword and shield and sat cross-legged on the ground as he regained his breath. That'll teach me for going soft on you. Ragnar grinned. Maybe, but I managed to get through your defences, and this was my first time trying. He squeezed Kest's shoulder. Come on, let's try again. I don't think that's a good idea. Kest gestured across the training ground towards the older lads. Someone might see you, and after last night... You're just worried I'll beat you again. Will that be before or after I take you to the talking narhole? Ragnar frowned. What? Well, I thought while we were on the subject of complete fantasy. Do you recall me telling you to piss off? I do. I still don't know what that really means, though. It means you're being a prick, and you're ducking out of losing again. Who lost? As far as I can tell, you've never beaten me. Not weighed down with a massive shield. He held up his sword and dagger. But with these, I think I've got a good shot at beating anyone. Yeah. Kest cupped his ear and inclined his head, as if hearing something on the wind. Ragnar frowned and glanced across the Braun Sea. It had been over a year since raiders from the northern reaches had plundered their shores, but the image of their pale features and white hair still haunted his dreams. What is it? I think, yes, um, I can definitely hear it. Hear what? It's that talking narwhal. He's saying you're right. Piss off. He's saying you've got what it takes to beat me. Piss off. Kess made a sad face. And I thought you wanted to spar. Pick up your weapons. Ragnar pointed to the ground. Get up. Fine. Kest got to his feet, rolled his shoulders and became armed with his sword and shield. You really want to do this? Ragnar nodded. You know you shouldn't listen to imaginary narwhals, don't you? Ragnar snorted out a laugh. Do you ever shut up? Not if I can help it. Kest gave Ragnar the nod. Ah, look, Sven said as he approached. The chieftain's runt fights like a Siisha dancing girl. Stripped to the waist and streaming sweat, Sven halted between Ragnar and Kest, his sword hanging loosely at his side, his shield held easily in his other hand. One day, Sven, Ragnar said, his voice warbling between boy and man, you will kneel before me as your chieftain. He pointed his sword at him. So, I suggest you start showing respect. I will never kneel before a pathetic boy like you. Go eat a turd, Raven Nose, Kest said. What did you say? Sven's eyes widened. You heard. You're getting in the way of our training. 
Kest moved to Ragnar's side and readied his sword and shield. So, either eat a turd or piss off. Either works for me. Sven eyed the pair and shook his head before spitting on the ground and marching away. Kest's shoulders relaxed. Didn't I say he's a massive asshole? Chapter 4 Ragnar lay on his sleeping mat and stared at the ceiling in the darkness. He wrinkled his nose at the lingering odour of feet, sweat and farts from the other lads. The snoring of two boys at either end of the room grated on his ears. He let out a long sigh and flipped his pillow over hoping it would help him sleep. He turned towards Kest. You awake? Yeah. How can anyone sleep with Harold snoring? Someone should stuff a rag in his mouth or something. I've been thinking. That's never a good sign. I think I'm going to keep training with the sword and dagger. It just feels right. You know Olaf and your father will never approve. Might be best keeping your head down and getting on with your training like the rest of us. I don't see why I can't do both. Kest sniffed. Same reason you don't see the kennel master working the forge. This is different. Do you really want Maya as chieftain over you? Yeah, right. No one would accept that. Maybe not, but he could always have another son. A bastard? Why not? My father's wrong to rely on one thing. Our enemies expect us to use the shield wall. One day someone is going to come up with a way to beat us and we'll be slain. Or taken as slaves. Never going to happen. Kest sat up. The shield wall has always worked and always will. When we hunt, it's the element of surprise that brings down a kill. We stalk and hide, make sure our prey is unaware of our presence. And that's when we strike. It's about surprise. Yeah, hunting's about surprise. But we're talking about war. We're talking about protecting Mirand from raiders, not creeping around some reed beds for deer. Ragnar's fists grew tight. But if our enemies expect a shield wall, that's what they will train for. What if they arrived on our shores to face a host of warriors using a bunch of different techniques? Oh, I don't know, they could send a few hundred arrows our way. Ragnar shook his head. If nothing changes, we'll stagnate. And history tells us people who don't change end up gone. Gone? Gone where? Enslaved, annexed, conquered, killed. You ever hear of the Verishi? Kest paused for a long moment. No. They were once a great nation to the east and now they're not. So? Your father isn't about to alter generations of training because you saw some dancers spinning with a couple of swords. Too much change is as bad as none at all. Why don't we live in caves anymore? First it was the sword dancing, and now you want to live in a bloody cave. You sure Sven didn't bash you on the head? That's not what I mean. We've both been up to the cliffs where our ancestors used to live. Why don't we still live there? Why would anyone want to live in some stinking cave when there are perfectly good houses and castles? Exactly. We outgrew the caves and needed somewhere else to live. Ulfred said that allowed us to farm and fish and thrive. It happened over time, though. I bet they didn't suddenly all move out of their caves one day and decide to build houses. They must have done it over years. Kest sighed. You've made your point. Does that mean you'll train with me? I can master the two-blade technique over time, then I can teach others. Silence stretched between them. Kest? I'm thinking. What's to think about? I don't know. Reputation, skill level, loads of things. Ragnar smiled. You think my father's going to complain when I slay our enemies? Fine. But if we do this, we do it at night when no one can see us. And if anyone catches us, I'll tell them you made me do it. See? That wasn't so difficult, was it? He got to his feet. Let's go. Now? Yes, now. Now's perfect. I wasn't planning on sleeping tonight anyway. See? It shouldn't be a problem then. I was being sarcastic. I know. Ragnar gestured towards Harald curled up in his blankets. You think either of us are going to sleep with him snoring, though? I guess not. Kest growled out a sigh. Fine. I'm coming. I'm coming. Chapter 5 under the light of the full moon, Ragnar stood with Kest on the empty training ground. Wind whipped in from the Braun Sea, bringing with it smells of seaweed and wood smoke. Kest stood in a half-crouch, holding a short sword and a small round shield. Ragnar gripped his sword and dagger and gave Kest the nod. Kest shot forward, 
and hammered a blistering combination of thrusts and cuts. Ragnar strained to make out Kest's dulled blade in the low light, dodging and parrying each strike. He pictured the women's movements and tried to copy their forms, using his sword to distract and block while he slashed his dagger at odd angles. He spun into Kest's shield and fell onto the ground. Kest pressed his sword's blunted tip against Ragnar's throat. You keep showing me where you're aiming that dagger, and you keep leaving your left side open. Thanks. Ragnar shot up and circled Kest, trying to make his movements less jerky, less predictable. He swiped Kest's sword away and thrust his dagger. Kest's shield smashed into Ragnar's hand, sending the dagger to the ground. Still leaving yourself open. Crap. It is. Kest lowered his shield and signalled he was done. This isn't going to work. No, I'm just not used to it yet. He shrugged. Remember how bad we were when we started with the boys? How bad you were, you mean? We both were, remember. So, why start again? Ragnar glanced down at the dagger. Because I know I can do it. Sword and shield is fine, but it's too slow, too unwieldy. With this... He met Kest's gaze. With this, I can use my wits. It's about outsmarting an opponent, rather than relying on strength alone. Yeah, you should let your father know. I'm sure he'd love to hear you talking like that. I just need to prove him wrong. I need to figure out the patterns. Get my body to move right. Kest gestured to the moon. And I need to sleep. This was a bad idea. Kest, please. I can't do this. I'm sorry, Rag. You're on your own. Ragnar raked a hand back through his hair as Kest returned the weapons. A sinking feeling gripped his chest. He ran after Kest and joined his side. You coming back to the dorm? Yeah. Ragnar took in a breath. How long have we been friends? What sort of a question's that? I'm serious. I don't know. Since I can recall... You know I've always had your back. I know. I was there when... Fine. For creation's sake. I'll train with you. He turned to Ragnar. But you're taking the blame if we get caught. Tomorrow, then. Kest sighed. Fine. Chapter 6 For more than a moon cycle, Ragnar trained himself in the two-blade technique, moving as the performers did, building muscle and balance. Night after night he sparred with Kest. With each passing day, Ragnar found his speed increasing, his movements more fluid, his technique improving. On a late summer evening he slid his dagger past Kest's shield for a third time in a row and grinned. Still think this is a waste of time, eh? You are more like. Kest stepped back and fell into guard. If you're not careful, you'll end up like Sven. Ragnar frowned. What's that supposed to mean? It means, I'm happy helping you out, but you don't have to be an arsehole about it. Ragnar's shoulders sagged. Right. Kest slammed into him, shield first. Whoa! Ragnar blocked the sword strikes and spun behind his friend, pressing the dagger's edge against his throat. Kest twisted free and laughed. Good one. That's what you get for comparing me to Sven. You shouldn't let little taunts get the better of you. Or of you. Kest gestured to the moon now halfway across the sky. We should get back. I don't know about you, but I'm bloody knackered. All this extra training is getting in the way of my sleep. You're not quitting on me, are you? Kest shook his head. No. I'd hate to think it's because I keep beating you. You're only beating me because we've been focused on your training. How about I teach you? If there were more than one of us? No. You can get crap from your father if you want. He glanced towards the castle. I think we're lucky we've got away with this for as long as we have. Ragnar shrugged. Your loss. I'm happy to show you a few things. Kest smirked. I bet that's what you say to all the girls. Piss off. Kest slipped the shield from his grip and squeezed Ragnar's shoulder. Remember the good old days, Rag. What good old days? The good old days when you could take a joke? Ragnar gave a slight nod. Maybe you're not the only one not getting enough sleep. He met Kest's gaze and forced a smile. Sorry. Well, screw me sideways. Kest twisted his little finger in his ears. Did Ragnar Wolfsbane, son of Ragnar Wolfsbane, just apologize? I'll take it back if you want. Kest led the way back towards the castle. No, it's fine. I'll take what I can get.
You know sometimes, Kest, it's not just Sven who can be a complete arsehole. Kest shoved Ragnar's shoulder and the pair laughed. We can all be assholes together. You can do that if you want. Just leave me out of it. Chapter 7 The next morning Ragnar arrived at the practice yard to find it empty. Where is everyone? Kest slapped his head. It's Roligdag. Ragnar frowned. We're losing track of days now? Apparently so. Kest rubbed his hands together. Maybe we could do some more training. Screw that, let's get some food together and go down to the beach. To do what? To do nothing. That's the point. I don't know about you, but I'm knackered. Let's have some fun. Ragnar sighed. You win, lead the way. After grabbing some provisions, Ragnar followed Kest from the castle grounds down to the harbour. Mirand overlooked the Braun Sea from a wide bay. Stone houses, shops and taverns teemed with people. They passed market stalls and women selling cockles and whelks from trays. Ragnar stood at the sea's edge and eyed a trio of his father's ships, slim and low in the water, with a dozen oars at each side and the central mast reaching up to the sky. He longed to sail to explore the world. Ulfred had told him of lands beyond the Brown Sea, Ostreich, Molotok, Yao, and Sishin. One day, he promised himself, he would see the world, but the furthest he'd ever ventured from home was half a day's walk to hunt boar with a band of his father's men, only to come home empty-handed. He jogged to catch up with Kest, and skirted past a group of men stripping a whale. Every part of the animal would be used, its meat eaten, its blubber rendered down for soap and lamps, the spermaceti used for candles, its bones carved into needles, combs and handles, while others would be shaped into charms and trinkets and traded with passing travellers. He covered his mouth and tried not to gag at the stench, coming from the creature's stomach cavity. Ragnar followed the coast south, the bustle of the town making way for headland and cliffs. Thick grasses swayed with the wind as seagulls filled the sky with their calls. Where are we going? Kest looked back and gestured for him to keep following. This way. The caves? Kest shrugged a shoulder. Why not? We're not going to find anything else. You never know. What about resting? Kest jerked a thumb behind him. If your father sees you doing nothing around the castle, do you really think he'll leave you be? Ragnar nodded. Fair point. Some of these caves are bone dry, and if we happen to come across an old arrowhead, all the better. Whatever happened to that knife you found? My father kept it. He displays it above the fireplace. That old thing. He reckons it probably belonged to one of our ancestors. How would he know? Kess shrugged. He says it's from back in the days when our people used to live in those caves. That was hundreds of years ago. Yeah. He gestured to an opening in the hillside. This one looks good. Ragnar ducked inside and entered first. After a short while, they gathered wood and lit a fire, filling the cave with light and smoke. The crackling flames joined the tide's constant rhythm. Kest unwrapped the bread and cheese and offered half to Ragnar. The pair ate with their backs to the fire and looked out across the bay from the cave's entrance. What do you think about Helga? Kest asked between mouthfuls. Ragnar froze, knowing he should be careful where Kest's sister was concerned. No doubt Kest's parents would like nothing more than to join the Wolfsbane and Jorensen families, though his father would more likely arrange a marriage with the daughter of another chieftain to avoid rivalries turning to war. She seems like a good sister. Is that it? Kest asked. That's all you've got to say about her? I don't really know her apart from what you've told me. Do you not think she's pretty? I've honestly never thought about it. Ragnar met his gaze. She's my best friend's sister, and I see you as a brother. It wouldn't be incest. I don't think about her in that way. Maybe you should. She likes you, you know. And I thought this was about getting away from the castle to rest. I didn't plan this. I just thought about it on the way up here. Some might call it an ambush. Well, some are assholes. Ragnar swallowed the last of his bread and got to his feet. Where are you going? He looked back at Kest. I figured we could train. Kest groaned and fell to the cave floor sprawling on his back. And you say I ambushed you, the one day we get to ourselves and you want to spend it prancing about? Training, not prancing. Amounts to the same bloody thing. Kest rolled onto his side and leaned up.
We haven't brought any weapons. Dragnar rubbed his chin. We can use sticks. Sticks? Are you kidding me? Sticks? What's wrong with sticks? Kest sniffed. I haven't fought with a stick since I was five summers. Fine. Don't bother. Ragnar folded his arms. I'll practice on my own. He strode from the cave out onto the plain overlooking the town. And maybe I'll tell Helga you warned me to stay away from her. Wait. Kest followed him outside. Wait. You can't tell her that. My parents will skin me. Did they put you up to this? He pointed to the cave. Get Ragnar alone and get him to marry Helga. I never said anything about marrying her. But that's what your parents want. You know as well as I do, I'll have no say in who I eventually marry. Father will probably seek out some wide-hipped breed sow from the marshlands to secure his supply of peat or something. Kest grinned. She sounds very nice. You don't get it, Kest. Ragnar's jaw clenched as he stared out to sea. I'm not like you. There are expectations of me. Things I have to do for the benefit of Mirand and the people here. I can't just strut around like you. I don't strut around. I've seen you in town, walking like a warrior with a gaggle of girls following you. You could choose any one of them and both be happy. He took a deep breath and sighed. But I'll have my wife chosen for me. And probably soon. So, what do you get in return? To live in a castle? To rule one day? Sounds great. Really? Ragnar glared at his friend. I'd gladly swap with you. And that means I get to be chieftain. He grinned and clapped his hands together. Done. Ragnar shook his head. Actually, I've changed my mind. But if I were, you'd have to do anything I say, right? Within reason, I guess. My father doesn't wield ultimate power. If he started making bad decisions, the people would overthrow him, and the Wolfsbanes would be exiled. A deep crease set on Kest's brow. So, you're only in power, so long as our people think you should be. Yes. How can you not know this? I suppose it's some special chieftain teaching they don't give to the rest of us. You know, after Olaf's beaten us all to the ground and you're taken off with Ulfred, I expect they tell you then. Pretty much. Meanwhile, I end up running errands for the warriors, or your father. Or dodge doing any work and chase girls. Kest smiled. Well, they're not going to chase themselves, are they? See? Ragnar's jaw tightened. See the difference? I've been learning all this crap, while everyone else gets to do what they want. He squeezed his eyes shut. I hate it. I'm sorry, Rag. Kest rested a hand on his shoulder. I never knew you were such a baby. This is why I want to train. This is something for me. No one else is making me do it, and then I can show them I don't have to listen to their crap anymore. Kest nodded. I get it. I do. It's just... Ragnar raised a hand, silencing his friend as something pressed against his mind. You feel that? Feel what? Ragnar inclined his head. There. He pointed to the sky as a wyvern approached from the north. Look at the size of that thing. Chapter 8 Gliding down to the beach below, the wyvern landed and folded in its wings. It stood as tall as a deer with bright red scales. It craned its head back and sniffed the air. Ragnar approached on bent knees and dropped down to the sands. He stared at the creature and met its black eyes. Though he had seen wyverns before, most were the size of hunting dogs. By creation, Ragnar made the sign of the chalice across his heart and leaned towards Kest. Look at that thing. Long talons extended from the wyvern's four toes, each easily capable of spearing through Ragnar. Its tail dragged along the sand, the barb on its end as sharp as any weapon. The wyvern stared at the castle, its eyes still. A forked tongue flickered across black teeth and the wyvern turned to the boys. Come to me. Ragnar cringed as a force pressed against his mind, compelling him to move. By creation, Kest said. The wyvern took a step towards them. The force on Ragnar's mind pushed harder, tugging at his thoughts, pulling at them like strands of yarn. Taking a breath, Ragnar held firm, severing the connections before they could form. He imagined an impenetrable shield wall protecting him. Kest gaped at the wyvern, his eyes glazed, a deep line furrowing his brow. Kest? Huh? Kest blinked. What? You can shield yourself. I... Kest's words faded as he stared at nothing. 
Ragnar hefted a rock the size of a babe's head. The wyvern eyed him. You should put that down. A compulsion to drop the rock flooded Ragnar's thoughts. He gritted his teeth and shook his head. No. He raised the rock to his shoulder. What have you done to Kest? I have simply convinced him he needs to rest. Who are you? I am no one to concern yourself with. I come only to scout. Scout? For what? The wyvern's tail lashed the air. I have answered your question. Now tell me, who are you? Ragnar Wolfsbane, son of Ragnar Wolfsbane, chieftain of Mirand and its surrounds. Well, Ragnar Wolfsbane, son of Ragnar Wolfsbane, you will forget I was here. The wyvern pressed its influence against Ragnar. Not likely. Without another word, the wyvern spread its wings wide and rose slowly into the air. Ragnar shielded his eyes from the sun as he watched the creature heading north. With his mind clear, Ragnar cursed himself for not hurling the rock at the wyvern's skull. He turned to his friend. You all right? Kest blinked and staggered to his feet, wavering as if drunk. He squinted, sucked in a breath and rubbed the back of his head. Where... where are we? His eyes widened. Wyvern. There was a wyvern. He scanned the horizon. Bloody huge thing. Where... where is it? It's gone. Ragnar rested a hand on Kest's shoulder. I should tell my father. What happened to me? Kest gazed down at his hands. Feels as if I've been on the ale all night, and then got into a brawl for good measure. The wyvern made you sleep. He gestured towards the castle. Come on, let's get back. Kest stumbled at Ragnar's side as they made their way back along the beach. What happened? I don't know. I could feel it trying to get into my head. What do you mean? It's mind. I stopped it. How? I felt it in there. I imagined a shield wall. I pushed it away. Kest frowned. I didn't feel anything. I wanted to stove its head in, but I couldn't. It's like it was controlling my will. That's insane. Tell me what you remember. Just, it was big, um, I can't. Do you remember what color it was? Kest rubbed his temples. No, green. No, it was, it was. Ragnar's fists tightened. I can't remember either. It's like it's fading from my thoughts. Big wyvern on the beach. Kest sang the words and Ragnar joined in. Big wyvern on the beach. Need to warn my father. Big wyvern on the beach. Need to warn my father. No. Ragnar shook his head and mounted the steps up to the harbour. My father, not your father. Big wyvern on the beach. Need to warn my father. They repeated the song over and over as they approached the castle. Kest stopped and turned to Ragnar when they reached the gates. Why are we singing this? Big wyvern on the beach. Need to warn my father. Ragnar frowned. I don't know. I don't either. We should tell him anyway. Wait. I think, yes. Ragnar nodded to himself. There was a wyvern, as big as a deer. It spoke to me on the beach. He smiled. I remember some. We should tell your father. Yes, we should. The pair entered the castle and followed an errand boy through to the great hall. Ragnar the Elder sat on a high-backed chair at the end of a long table, surrounded by his closest warriors and advisers. Ragnar stood before his father with Kest at his side. What is it, boy? I... um... Ragnar frowned and met Kest's gaze. What was it? Kest grinned. Big wyvern on the beach. Need to warn my father. Ragnar joined in with the song. His father's lip curled. You disturb me on Roly Dag to crow at me like a pair of minstrels. He pointed to the door. Get out. No, father, I remember... Well, spit it out, boy. Big wyvern on the beach. A big one. On the beach. A pulse thundered in Ragnar's skull. It was big, really big. I, um... It had powers, Kest said. It made me sleep. Ragnar made a shield wall. Ragnar's father looked between them and shook his head. You're not making sense, boy, neither of you. Ragnar held his eyes closed and concentrated. He pictured the scene in his mind and swiped away the tendrils of the wyvern's influence, still present in his thoughts. It was as big as a deer, and brightest red. 
It flew from the north. It said it was a scout. It tried to make me forget, but I remember. You think me stupid, boy. A wyvern. You expect me to believe there was a wyvern the size of a deer? Get out of my sight and leave your petty tales for Maya and the other children. His warriors laughed at the boys. Away with you both before I have you clean out the kennels. My lord? A familiar voice rang out across the hall. Ragnar turned to his tutor, Ulfred. The elderly man stepped forward dressed in robes of the deepest vermilion. His oak walking staff clicked against the stone floor with each laboured step. Ulfred, Ragnar the elder said, lines of confusion knitting his brow. Is there something you want to say? Ulfred dipped his head. I have read accounts of wyverns reaching the proportions young Ragnar describes and beyond. Ragnar the elder cocked an eyebrow. Beyond? Some accounts also describe a sensation, such as the young man described. And has my son read these tales? No, my lord. They are kept hidden, secreted away. Ragnar the elder sat back in his chair, pushed out his bottom lip, and stroked his beard for a long moment before speaking. Form a search party. He gestured vaguely to a group of warriors standing near the door. Search the area for any sign of this creature and report back to me. I should go with them, father. I think I can remember where it landed. We were by the caves, Kest said. I remember. We were talking about... He stopped at Ragnar's glare. Ragnar the Elder held his son's gaze. You will stay here. You and I have much to discuss. But do not argue with me, boy. Sorry, father. When the search party left, only Ragnar's father and Ulfred remained. Ragnar dragged a chair out from under the table and shuffled onto the seat. What is it, father? You are to be chieftain one day and it is high time you acted like one. All these fantasies and stories are for children. You are almost a man grown. I swear. Enough, boy. You can wait with me until the search party returns. What if they don't find anything? Ragnar the Elder shrugged a shoulder. That is not what concerns me. Oh. Ragnar lowered his gaze and traced the lines along the table's surface. When you say it was a scout, did it say who or what for? Ragnar shook his head. I don't think so. Think, boy. Think. I don't know. My memory is hazy. That's why we made up the song. And you say it was as big as a deer? Yes. Maybe bigger. Did you see where it went? Ragnar closed his eyes and nodded. North. North? It came from the north and headed back that way. Ragnar the Elder flexed his fingers. Are you sure? Pretty sure. His father slammed a fist down on the table. This is important, boy. I'm sorry. Ragnar let out a shuddering breath. It clouded my thoughts. Ulfred cleared his throat. The boy may not be able to think freely. We still do not understand the extent of their abilities. Ragnar's father steepled his fingers and stared into the middle distance. Hmm. After a while, the door swung open and a pair of warriors returned. We found tracks near where Ragnar the Younger said, The boy is telling the truth. Ragnar the Elder gave a quick nod. We need to be ready. Yes, my lord. The warrior bowed his head and exchanged words with the other men gathered near the door. Ragnar turned to his father. What do you think it means? If that wyvern was a scout, we can expect more. More wyverns? I don't know. But I'll make sure we're ready. Chapter 9 The next morning Olaf called all the boys to him and marched before them. You have worked hard today. Among you I know there are some great warriors in the making. He stopped in front of Ragnar and stared down his nose. And there are others who are not. His mouth twitched. The boys' tourney will take place in two days. Some of the boys cheered. Sven winked at Ragnar and grinned. Olaf held his hands out for silence. Anyone wishing to enter must announce their intent. I will enter. Sven stepped forward and beat his chest. And with creation's blessing, I will win. And I, Ragnar said, raising his jaw when Sven and his friends laughed. Olaf stared at him for several heartbeats, but Ragnar faced him down. His uncle nodded and recorded the names on a scroll as more boys came forward. What are you doing? Sven sidled up to Ragnar. 
There's no way you can beat any of us, let alone me. Ragnar smiled at him. We shall see what creation wills. You're pathetic, Sven pointed at the castle. You should join your sister in the embroidery room. Ragnar shrugged. Your words are wind to me, Sven. And maybe I'll join your sister when I'm done with you. Kess laughed. Yeah, in her bed again. She'll do anything for a few slivers of hack. Sven flung himself forward, fists flying. Kess dodged to one side. Ragnar stepped between them, taking strikes to his cheek and nose. He slammed into Sven and ducked from the next blow, before punching Sven in the stomach. Sven rose from the ground, like a pup plucked up by its mother as Olaf flung him aside and stared him down. Enough! Sven scowled and pointed at Ragnar. But he... Enough, Sven. Save your rage for the tawny. Ragnar wiped the blood from his nose and tried to hide the pain in his cheek with a smile. He returned Sven's glare and started when a heavy hand locked down on his shoulder. He spun and faced his uncle. Enough, Ragnar. Olaf's voice came as little more than a growl. He turned to the other boys. You are dismissed. Anyone interested in the tourney should see me by sundown on the morrow. As the boys left, Olaf gestured for Ragnar to follow him. The pair sat on a log and faced the sea. That wasn't my fault. Ragnar blotted the blood from his nose with a sleeve. Sven, have you a death wish, boy? Ragnar shook his head. Making enemies of your fellow warriors is foolish. You might have to face him in the tourney, and now he has a reason to not hold back. I hope he doesn't hold back. Then everyone can watch me beat him at his best. What was it you said about words being wind? He met Ragnar's gaze. You can't beat him. Not now. Not ever. We'll see. Olaf smiled and folded his arms. I admire your courage, boy, but he's too strong. I can beat him with skill. If you say so. What are the rules? Two boys face off. The first to draw blood wins. And the weapons. Free choice. Do you have to use a shield? Olaf shook his head. You can use a mason spear for all I care. Ragnar smiled at that. Maybe you could convince Sven to use that combination. Olaf sniffed. You wish, boy. Chapter 10 The following night, Ragnar and Kess sparred behind the mead hall, Kess sweating and breathing hard, his lips pulled back from his teeth in a grimace. Ragnar danced left, spinning and lashing out with his sword. Kest blocked and fended off the dagger thrusts. He swung his axe down, its head padded with cloth, as Ragnar weaved to the right. Ragnar pressed into Kest's guard and brought his dagger past the shield. That's four in a row. Kest looked down and laughed. You're too fast, I should have gone for a sword. A flash of movement caught Ragnar's eye. He turned to see Sven leaning against the mead hall, a thin smile on his lips. The older boy disappeared into the shadows of the hall as he walked away. Prick. Ragnar shook his head and cringed when Kest smacked a blow to his stomach. Ow. Careful. You're dead. Kest lowered his axe and gestured to the ground. Your guts would be flopping out. There'd be blood everywhere. He grinned and pointed past him. That's what happens when you... That was Sven, Ragnar said. Sven? Kest glanced behind him. I didn't see anyone. He distracted me. That's a crap excuse if ever I heard one. In the eyes of creation, I swear... All right, you don't have to be so bloody formal about it. Ragnar took in a deep breath. Do you think he'll tell my father? I doubt he'd bother telling tales. He'll just figure out a way to hold it over you. Yeah, well, I won't let him. We'll just say he made it up because he's a massive asshole. If my father asks, I'm not lying. It won't come to that. And if it does, you just use your spinny blade crap at the tourney and make him eat dirt. Ragnar's lip curled. I'll make him eat more than that. We should gather some crap from the kennels. We could give Sven a beard like your father. My father's beard isn't made of dog crap. No, but Sven's could be. You know how much he tries to look like a real warrior. Still got a face as smooth as a baby's ass, though. Ragnar laughed and slid his foot back into stance. You ready to go again? That's what your sister said to me last time I... Piss off. Fine. I'll go. No, we need to train. And we need to sleep. Ragnar rolled his eyes. What's the matter, Kest? Weapons too heavy for you? Yes, 
and it's the middle of the bloody night. Come on, just a few more rounds. Fine. Kest gestured to the torches glowing on the battlements. What's with all the guards? Ragnar followed Kest's gaze and stepped past the axe swing. That wyvern spooked father. He believed you then? Yeah. Ragnar shoved Kest's shield with a palm and parried the axe. Not that it makes a difference. What happened? He brushed the axe aside and rolled through, getting a strike on Kest's back. A few of the warriors came back and reported tracks on the sand. Kest smiled and jerked his shield forward, smacking Ragnar's right hip. So, what's the problem? Ragnar stopped. He thought I was a liar. He said it was a fantasy that I was telling stories. He blocked the axe and winced at the shot of pain racing up his sword arm. And then, when the proof arrived, I don't even get so much as an apology. Your father won't show weakness. It's not weak to admit when you've wronged someone. He took in a breath, fainted right, then lunged forward, getting a hit on Kest's chest. He lowered his weapons and sighed. For once, I just wish he could admit that he was wrong. Yeah. Kest raised his shield and began to circle. And then we'll get a visit from that talking narwhal. What is it with you and narwhals? He hit the shield once, twice, and parried the axe. Kest smirked and staggered backward. Narwhals are stupid, they're funny. You wouldn't be saying that if one of those tusks impaled you. I could take on a narwhal. Screw those fishy bastards. Ragnar frowned. I just wish he could be proud of me. What? The narwhal? No, dickhead, my father. He thrust a knee into Kest's shield and scored another hit against his chest. I'm laying my heart out here and you're taking the piss. Kest patted his shield and nodded. Well, someone needs to. Whatever. You've just got to see it from the big old chieftain's perspective. He's a warrior, proud and true. You're weak and unimpressive. Piss off. He ducked past the axe. You really are an asshole sometimes. You've got to stop taking yourself so seriously. Who gives a crap what your father thinks? Everyone. He stepped back. You ready? Kest's shield collided with Ragnar's stomach. He spun into the axe. He dropped to one knee and gasped for breath. Pathetic. Ragnar met Sven's eyes. Ragnar the Elder stood to Sven's right, his arms folded, his mouth set in a grim line. Ice flooded Ragnar's chest. He scrambled to his feet, his breath coming thick and heavy. With a single nod, Ragnar the Elder dismissed Sven before approaching the two boys. Leave Kest. Kest bolted, dropping his axe and shield in the dust. We have spoken of this, Ragnar's father said in a quiet voice, yet you have chosen to defy me again. But, his father threw a fist into his stomach. Winded and gasping, Ragnar doubled over, retching from the pain. A warrior is always prepared. He thumped down on the back of Ragnar's head, slamming him to the ground. Come, show me your technique. He stepped back, signalling for his son to rise. With gritted teeth, Ragnar forced himself to stand. He rocked on his heels, trying to ignore the throbbing pain in his head and stomach. Show me. You're unarmed. His father narrowed his eyes. I said, show me. Ragnar assessed his father's stance then threw himself forward, swinging his sword. He spun and thrust his dagger. His father stepped back, allowing the sword to pass by with ease. He punched Ragnar hard in the face, shattering his nose with a sickening crack. Ragnar's vision blurred. His ears rang, his breaths wheezed as blood oozed from his nose. He blinked through tears and tried to steady himself. A sweep to the legs sent him crashing to the ground, his skull bouncing off the bare earth. Opening his eyes, he gazed up at his father looming over him, the will to fight gone. His father grabbed him by the shirt and slammed him against the mead hall. You are not and will never be a warrior if you dance around like a whore. He spat on the ground. Men will not respect you or follow you into battle. You can't even defeat me unarmed as I am. You are a disgrace. He released his grip and Ragnar's knees buckled, spilling him to the ground. His father turned and walked away. Why do you hate me so? Ragnar the Elder stopped. I'm sorry, father. I'm sorry I'm not Sven. I'm sorry I'm not a cowardly prick who picks on the weak. His father jerked as if struck and returned to squat before his son.
You've just given me an excellent idea, boy. If I marry Maya to Sven, he can become the next chieftain. Ragnar shot to his feet. Mother would never have let you do this. Don't drag her into this. Let her lie with creation. Listen to me, boy. You are forbidden to fight like a woman, and you will show me the respect I am due as your father and chieftain. Ragnar coughed and spat blood at his feet. A fist to the jaw sent him back to the ground. He lay for a second, gasping for breath as another barrage of strikes rained down. Darkness claimed him. Chapter 11 Ragnar awoke, his mind groggy, his head aching. How long had he slept? He squinted at the unfamiliar woolen blankets. Where was he? He yawned and winced with the pain along his face and side. He slumped back and stared up at the ceiling, his head throbbing. He reached up to his cheek and prodded swollen bruises. He wanted to moan to cry out like a child, but he remained silent. There was no way he would give his father the satisfaction. Ah, Ragnar, a muffled voice came. You're awake. Ragnar squinted at the healer standing over Ragnar. He wore a leather cloak and wyvern mask, the whites of his eyes just visible. How long have I been here? Ragnar's words croaked through parched lips. Where is everyone? You came in early yesterday morning. Your father said I should keep you here. Everyone has gone to watch the tournament. A sigh whistled through his mask. But I have to stay here and watch you. Ragnar swung his legs from the bed, feeling the icy bite of stone against his bare feet. Where are my clothes? He looked down at his naked body, his chest peppered with scabs and bruises. Where are you going? The healer asked. To the tawny. You are not healed, you must stay here. Did my father put you up to this? I am a healer. You are injured. Ragnar ignored him and stood, his stomach and back aching, his nose throbbing. He pushed the pain away and searched around for his clothing. The trunk. The healer gestured along the far wall. But you are not well enough. Flipping open the lid, Ragnar dragged out his leggings and blood-spattered tunic. He dragged the clothes on and pulled on his boots. I'll return when I win. Ignoring the healer's protests, Ragnar stepped outside and made his way into the inner bailey. He followed the noise of pipes and drums towards the training grounds. Men and women crowded around the fighting ring. Merchants hawked their wares from many hued carts, while women served ale from behind a long makeshift bar. Children cheered at jugglers and acrobats as the older boys gathered in groups around tents next to the fighting ring. Slipping through the crowds, Ragnar spotted Kest and pulled him aside. Damn, Kest said, what happened to you? My father. Damn. Ragnar shrugged. But I'm still going to enter. You're not going to use. I am. They'll never allow it. There's nothing in the rules saying I can't. I asked Olaf. Did you ask if it was specifically permitted? Well, no, but he said there were no restrictions on the weapons you can use. I just need help getting them. Kest rubbed the back of his neck and gave a half smile. What is it? Your father warned me against training with you. He said the same to me. And you're not going to let that stop you, are you? Ragnar grinned, then winced at the pain in his nose. Fine, I'll get your weapons. He raised a finger. But if your father gives me crap, I'm blaming you. You always do. Ragnar waited outside the tent for Kest. His friend returned with a short sword and dagger and handed them to Ragnar. You didn't get these from me. Ragnar checked the sword's balance and moved through some dagger drills as Kest watched. It's time. Ragnar glanced up at the passing boys making their way to the ring. Taking a breath, he followed Kest into the fighting circle and fell into line with the other boys. His father glared at him from a high-backed seat at the other side of the ring. I'll show you, Ragnar muttered. His uncle halted before the line of boys and raised a hand. The crowd fell silent. First bout. Olaf's voice echoed across the grounds. Sven and Bjorn. The boys marched out to cheers from the crowd, both with their chests bare. They stopped ten paces apart and bowed to their chieftain, and then to each other. Olaf dropped his hand. Fight. Sven charged forward, his sword raised and let out a guttural war cry. He slammed aside Bjorn's sword thrust with his shield and sliced a gash into the smaller boy's forearm. Olaf pointed at Sven. First blood, Sven. Men and women cheered as Bjorn hobbled away, clutching his wound. 
Sven bowed to Ragnar the Elder and swaggered from the ring. Two more bouts took place before an errand boy arrived to let Ragnar know he was up next. Chapter 12 Ragnar steeled himself and gripped his weapons. Good luck, Kess said. I won't need it. He closed his eyes in a silent prayer, then walked into the ring. He scanned the bare earth, checking for stones or bumps that might come in useful, to find it swept flat. His father's eyes locked on his. Ragnar pulled his gaze away and tried to ignore all those people watching him. He turned as his opponent entered the circle. Leif stood a foot taller than Ragnar and was one of Sven's closest allies. Armed with a sword and shield, he brushed by Ragnar, his scarred lip giving him a permanent sneer. Don't think I'll go easy on you because you've already taken a beating. Ragnar stared through him and rolled his shoulders. Olaf signalled for them to bow. Ragnar bowed to his father and then to Leif. The lad might have been a prick, but he still deserved respect. Fight. Leif planted his feet into the ground and peered over his round shield. What are you waiting for? Ragnar held his sword and dagger and took a wide arc to approach. Leif sprung at Ragnar, swinging his sword towards his face. Ragnar spun and slashed his dagger across Leif's back, drawing a red line from his right shoulder down to his left hip. Leif fingered his wound and stared wide-eyed at his blood-covered hand. Olaf pointed at Ragnar. First blood, Ragnar the Younger. No, Leif said. It's not fair. Silence, boy. Olaf glared at him. Stand down. Leif turned to the crowd. He fights like a woman. Get your wound treated and rest, Olaf said. Accept your loss like a warrior. Huffing, Leif marched past Ragnar with his chin raised. With a sigh, Ragnar returned to the covered area and sat, panting as the pain from his father's beating flared once more. Kest grinned and sat across from Ragnar. You were fast out there. I don't have the strength for a drawn-out fight. My father beat it out of me. One of the smaller boys tapped Kest's shoulder. You're next. Kest nodded and strapped on his shield. Wish me luck. You won't need it. Kest cocked an eyebrow. Don't be an arsehole. Fine, good luck. Ragnar handed Kest his sword and followed him outside. He stood with the other boys to watch. Olaf raised his hand. Kest and Torsten. Kest stopped in the center of the ring and bowed to Ragnar the Elder and then to his opponent. Torsten was smaller and thinner than Kest, but what he lacked in stature, he made up for with speed. Armed with only a longsword, he held it across his body with a two-handed grip. Fight! Torsten raced forward and screamed. He swung his sword down with full force, slamming it against Kest's shield. Kest parried the blade through a series of strikes and counter-strikes. Ragnar wondered if their extra training had helped Kest's speed and strength. The crowd cheered when Kest ducked a broad horizontal slash and caught Torsten's forearm with his sword point. First blood, Kest. Torsten cradled his forearm and nodded at Kest. When Kest left the ring, Ragnar smiled. That was well fought. Thanks. I thought he was going to take my head off at one point. Ragnar shrugged a shoulder. I doubt it. Dull blade like that would more likely just get lodged in your neck and you'd bleed out slowly. Kest winced. At least he took his loss like a warrior. True. Doesn't stop him being any less of a prick, though. I'm surprised Leif didn't start rolling about on the floor crying. Ragnar sniffed. What was that? Leif stood over Kest with a few other lads in tow. Just saying you didn't take your defeat very well out there. Leif laughed and pointed at Ragnar. He only won because he cheated. Tell that to Olaf, Ragnar said, squaring up to him. We could go again if you're not happy with the result. So you can fight like a woman again, Ragnar shrugged. If I fight like a woman, what does that say about you? A few of the watching boys laughed. Leif's sneer deepened. You think that because you're the chieftain's son, you can do what you want. Kess shook his head. Leif can read minds now. I say we burn him as a witch. Ragnar raised a hand. Maybe being the chieftain's son has taught me to take my losses like a man, not a snivelling child. You got lucky. Leif looked him up and down. And based on the state of you, you won't get much further in this tourney. Ragnar sighed. Will you please piss off now? I'm missing the next bout. Leif narrowed his eyes and signalled to his friends. Come on. As Leif stormed off, Kest shook his head and sighed. What a massive asshole. Yep. 
You think he's related to Sven? Ragnar shook his head. Doesn't have the raven nose? True. Speaking of raven-nosed assholes, Kest gestured past Ragnar to Sven, with Leif following close behind. Looks like someone's been telling tales. Sven stopped in front of Ragnar and stared down at him. Ragnar rolled his eyes. What do you want, Sven? Let me guess Leif came to you complaining. You took him by surprise. But we both know if you face me, I'll beat you. We'll see. And when I do, I'm going to make sure you stay down. He smiled at Ragnar. I'm sure your father would approve. Or he might just have you exiled as an example of what happens to raven-nosed pricks, Kest said. Don't waste your breath, Kest. Ragnar raised his chin. After all, there's enough hot air being blown around here already. Silence stretched between them for several heartbeats. I'm done talking, Sven said. Hopefully, we'll meet in the tourney. And if not... He let the words hang and stalked away. Ragnar clenched his fists. I hate him. Call him by his true name, you hate that raven-nosed asshole. Ragnar grinned. I do. One of the younger lads tapped Ragnar's hip, causing him to start. What? The boy shrunk back from Ragnar's glare. You're... you're up next. Thanks. Kest patted Ragnar's back. If you win this, you're in the final bout. I know. Just imagine it's Sven out there. Imagine smashing that stupid nose of his. Ragnar grinned and picked up his sword and dagger. Will do. Striding out to the ring, Ragnar gave a nod to his opponent. Harold. Large and slow, Harold was often the butt of Sven's jokes, but he was one of the strongest boys Ragnar knew. He stood with a two-headed axe and shield, even dulled. A weapon like that wielded by Harold could break bones with ease. The pair bowed to Ragnar's father, and then to each other. Fight! Harold lumbered forward and swung his axe. Ragnar whirled around him, dodging and weaving, letting the larger boy wear himself out. When Harold began to pant and his swing slowed down, Ragnar darted forward and cut a shallow nick into his chest. First blood, Ragnar the Younger. Harold glanced down at his chest and frowned. Good bout. Ragnar patted his friend's shoulder as they left the ring together. How did you get so fast? Ragnar shrugged. I've been doing extra training. You'll have to give me some pointers. Sure thing. Harold tore his shield from his arm and snatched a cup of ale from a serving girl. Good luck with the next round. Thanks, Harold. With creation's will, I'll win this thing. Harold stopped and smirked. You know Sven's still in, right? I do. But I know I can beat him. Harold squeezed Ragnar's arm. You're good, but you're not that good. Ragnar held his tongue as Harold joined his other friends. He turned his attention to the next bout, Kest versus Sven, and cringed at the quick work Sven made of Kest, leaving his friend with a deep gash on his cheek. Olaf pointed to Sven. First blood Sven. Though pleased he would not have to face Kest, the idea of fighting Sven sent waves of cold washing over him. He looked up at Kest's approach and forced a smile. You fought well out there. No, I didn't. Kest dropped his shield next to Ragnar and clutched his face. Blood streamed between his fingers. Ouch. You all right? I need to see the healer. He cut me real deep. Ragnar studied the cut. You'll have a mean-looking scar. Kest smiled, then winced. Do you need me to come with you? I'll be fine, you get ready. Smack that raven-nosed prick from me. Ragnar gazed across the arena. I'll try. Chapter 13 Ragnar stared into his father's eyes, the disappointed expression unmistakable. Why could his father not be proud he reached the final two? Perhaps if he fought with a sword and shield, his father would think differently. But then he would not have made it so far in the tournament. He gritted his teeth. He would prove his father wrong. He would make him bury his contempt and give him no choice but to raise his hand and show his pride to the rest of the clan. Creation favoured the victors. He halted before Olaf and turned as Sven strode into the ring. Sven's sword gleamed in the sun, the entire length of the blade honed to a mirror edge on both sides. Ragnar frowned and eyed the blade up and down. Though Olaf awarded victories to the boy who struck first blood, their weapons were blunted, apart from the very tips to ensure no fatal wounds. 
That wasn't the sword Sven had used in the previous bouts. Sven smirked when he came to a stop across from Ragnar. Sweat glistened on his brow, his features pale. Was he afraid? The pair bowed to Ragnar the Elder and then to each other. Fight! The crowd roared as Ragnar circled Sven. Had someone given him the replacement sword? He licked his lips and fixed Sven's gaze. Fear lingered behind those eyes. Sven lashed out with a vicious cut. The blade hissed past as Ragnar barely ducked back. He threw himself forward, aiming a low slash at Sven's legs beneath his shield. Sven blocked with ease, returning a backhand slash of his own. Ragnar led Sven around the outside of the arena, dancing and dodging his blows, trying to frustrate and tire the older boy. His technique split the crowd with some jeering and calling for him to fight like a man, while others mocked Sven for being weak. Ragnar's lungs burned and his arms ached. He forced Sven back behind his shield with a flurry of blows designed to confuse and frighten. Sven took the strikes, giving ground until Ragnar pulled back, gasping for air. Standing in the center of the ring, Ragnar lowered his blade. Who put you up to it? My father? Or uncle? Sven's eyes widened. Ragnar's stomach lurched as a wave of sickness washed over him. Did his family hate him so much? This was my idea. Sven spat on the ground and edged forward, his words barely audible over the crowd. No one put me up to anything. I had this blade honed so I could watch you die in front of everyone. When? A crease set on Sven's brow. When what? When would you have had time? I... um... He glanced back at Olaf. Ragnar charged forward. Steel clashed with steel. Beyond tired, Ragnar hacked at Sven like an untrained toddler fighting with a stick for the first time. Sven lowered his shield, deflecting a low cut from Ragnar. But his shield arm trembled when he tried to return to guard position. Ragnar lashed out with all his strength and speed, his dagger's tip glinting in the dying sunlight as it swung for Sven's face. Though Sven pulled back, avoiding the blade, Ragnar's fist connected with his nose. A piercing crack echoed across the ring. Sven staggered back, tears streaming from his eyes. He reached up to his nose, his back stiffening at the sight of blood on his fingers. Ragnar dropped to one knee breathless and took in the crowd's chants. Wolfsbane, Wolfsbane! The crowd turned silent. Ragnar raised his head and struggled to stand as Olaf held up a hand. Ragnar the Elder has ruled there was no wound struck. The bout will continue. He dropped his hand and the crowd cheered. Unless either of you yield? Ragnar shook his head. Sven cradled his broken nose and took up his sword. Never! He hefted his shield and staggered forward. He delivered an overhand smash. Ragnar danced aside and returned a cut with his dagger that Sven parried. Sven bashed Ragnar with his shield once, twice, throwing flashes of white through Ragnar's vision. Ragnar shot back, forcing Sven off balance for a brief heartbeat. Ragnar shifted his stance and led with his sword. Sven parried and brought his own sword down. Ragnar backed off before throwing himself at Sven, smashing through his guard. Sweat dripped into his eyes. Spotting the opening, he whirled and thrust his dagger, driving it into air. Something cold, then searing hot, slid up his left thigh. First blood to Sven. Ragnar stared at the long cut down his thigh as the crowd surged forward, hoisting Sven up onto their shoulders. But his gaze remained fixed on Ragnar. Chapter 14 With his wound cleaned, Ragnar limped from the infirmary and made his way back to the boys' dormitory to find Kest and a few other boys in animated conversation. Did you see his face when Ragnar broke that stupid nose of his? Kest asked. Harold greeted Ragnar with a smile. Kest turned to him. The almost champion. Almost. Ragnar let out a sigh. You was robbed, Harold said. As far as I can tell, you got first blood, not him. Ragnar nodded. Sven won. My father was right. Come on, Kest said, gesturing for Ragnar to sit on the bed. You came second, that's something to be proud of, and you did it on your own terms. He glanced over to the door before dragging something from beneath his pillow. I got this from the kitchens. He held up a wineskin. Well, in that case, who am I to argue? Ragnar smiled and took a swig before passing it along to Harold. The sweet drink slipped down, warming his stomach and chasing some of the aches away. All too soon, Kess downed the last of the wine and got to his feet. I suppose we should go to the award ceremony. Ragnar nodded. I guess. 
You should still get a prize, Harold said. If you get cake, you really ought to share it. I don't think my father will reward a loser. That makes us all losers then, Kest said. Can you imagine a world where everyone's a loser except for Sven? Harold laughed. Only if it was the stupidest nose contest. Kest shrugged a shoulder and gestured to the door. See, we should go. We can pretend old Raven Nose is getting a prize for his stupid face. Though I think you've smashed the raven out of him. Ragnar got up on wobbly legs. Sven won the tourney. It's only right that I offer my congratulations. Kest rolled his eyes. Such an honourable prick. Get pissed off for once. Get rowdy. Flip a table. Throw a bench or something. What makes you think I'm not pissed off? The fact that you're all he's the better man. I lost fair and square. Blah, blah. He didn't win fair and square. But he knows that. And I know that. And creation knows he's not the better man. Kest grinned. See? He turned to Harold. This is what I'm talking about. He rubbed his hands together. Ragnar groaned. Do you need to stay here? You have a few sips of summer wine, and suddenly you want to start a brawl. I'll be good. You know my father takes things like this very seriously. Kest's smile dropped. I said I'll be good. Ragnar limped towards the door. Let's go then. Chapter 15 Ragnar entered the mead hall with Kest and Harold close behind. Warriors sat along the central tables on long benches, while the boys, girls, and women sat on smaller tables around the edge of the hall. A pair of boars hung above the brazier, their flanks half carved by servants as spit boys turned them in a slow, constant rhythm. Ragnar salivated at the slabs of meat, the steaming turnips, and mashed carrot. A bard perching on a stool plucked a lute and sang a chirpy rendition of The Warrior and the Seamstress. Ragnar had heard the song hundreds of times growing up, but since Kest had explained the lyrics had a double meaning, he could no longer hear the line about the warrior's immense sword without grinning. Ragnar the Elder sat at the head of the hall with Olaf and Sven at his side. The raven glass hammer hung on the wall behind him, black and glowing with darkness. Ragnar sat between Olaf and Maya. His sister smiled up at him, a doll clutched in her arms. You were magical today. Ragnar sniffed. I lost. But you looked better. I liked how you danced. It wasn't supposed to be a dance, Maya. Ragnar folded his arms. It was supposed to be a fight and I lost. I still think you did well. He smiled at her and rubbed her hair. Ragnar the Elder stood and gestured for silence. Friends, his voice reverberated along the walls. Our tables are laden with the fruits of your hard labours. Eat, drink and be merry. Ragnar accepted a plate of boar and a tankard of ale, swilling the tender meat down with more drink. He found himself staring at Olaf, his mind racing. Had his uncle given Sven the sharpened blade? As the evening wore on, the room grew rowdier, warriors arm-wrestling and spilling food to the floor. The edges of Ragnar's vision blurred with the ale. He slumped into his chair. Friends, Ragnar the Elder stood again. We have feasted and drunk our fill. Now it is time to decorate our champion. Cheers rang out across the hall as men slapped down on the tables with hands and cups. Would Sven and Kest attend me? Making eye contact with Ragnar, Kest shrugged and wended through the crowds to the top table, standing next to Sven. As the boy's new champion, Sven will receive a fifty weight in silver and the winner's wreath to be worn with pride at all occasions. He handed Sven a buckskin pouch as Olaf placed a wreath woven from beech branches over Sven's head. Sven smiled at the cheers and held his head high. Olaf faced Kest. As runner-up, Kest receives a twenty weight in silver, and a hearty congratulations from us all, Ragnar the Elder added, slapping Kest's back. Kest gripped the pouch and glanced at Ragnar, his cheeks turning red. Ragnar knocked back the rest of his ale, his fingers flexing. He closed his eyes, not wanting to challenge his father, but the snub was too much. He took in a breath and frowned at the fuzzy sensation pressing against his mind. For a moment he gazed down at his ale, wondering if someone had slipped a herb into his drink but he recalled the sensation of the wyvern pressing into his thoughts. He slammed up his mind's shields, severing the connection. What about your son? A warrior on the central table stood and pointed at Ragnar. We all saw what happened. Your son reached the finals. 
Sven only beat him through blind luck. Ragnar the Elder sneered at the warrior and slammed his cup down on the table. My son, fought without honor. The hall fell silent. Battles are fought and won with sword and shield, not with the dancing of whores. He glared at his son. Ragnar does not deserve a prize, and will never be a warrior until he can fight like a man. Ragnar stood and faced his father. With respect, I still defeated the other boys. His father snorted and spat on the ground, his phlegm landing in the sawdust at Ragnar's feet. You defeated no one, boy. Sit down before I make you sit. Ragnar shook his head. Why can't you admit that you're wrong? I won those bouts fair and square, he pointed at Sven. And the only reason I lost is because you rigged the fight. His father struck Ragnar across the cheek, knocking him sideways, bringing fresh blood to his already bruised nose. You dare to speak to me like that in my own hall? His father's eyes bulged, his cheeks turning red. Let this be a lesson to you all, seasoned warriors and boys alike. A long silence stretched as men and women shuffled in their seats, a deep horn blasted from outside. Bells rang throughout Mirand. Raiders! Ragnar the Elder snatched his warhammer down from the wall. Everyone to your positions! Out, out, out! Where should I go, father? Ragnar asked, all his anger forgotten. Take Maya into the castle and hide with the women. I can fight. His father looked as if he'd stepped in something in the kennels. No, you can't. His words came like a punch to the gut. Ragnar wanted to protest, to argue the point, but instead he held his sister's hand and offered her a smile. Come on, let's go back to the castle. Chapter 16 Stepping into the night, Ragnar ran past the men and boys arming themselves with bows, swords and shields, the air filled with barking orders and tramping feet. He glanced up at the sky as a wyvern's form passed the moon. Was this what the creature had been scouting for? This way. He kept close to the walls with Maya at his side. A group of men raced past carrying shields and spears heading towards the town. He squinted at the sight of buildings near the harbour glowing with flames and pulled Maya close to him as they raced across the courtyard and entered the castle. Passing an armory, he grabbed a dagger and short sword and led Maya to his father's chamber, bolting the door behind them. He lit a pair of candles. Why are we in here? Father said you can sleep here tonight. I can't, with all the noise. I know, just hide under the furs. What are we hiding from? Ragnar stepped to the window and peered through the shutters. From the bad men. He wished he could take back the words as soon as they left his mouth. What bad men? Just bad men. But father will deal with them. He turned to her and forced a smile. And I'll never let anyone hurt you. He gazed over Mir and town, helpless as flames engulfed a dozen or so waterfront buildings. Warriors fought back the raiders while women drew buckets from the sea, passing them along to extinguish the fires. Ragnar wanted to join the fray, to prove himself a warrior, but he had to stay with his sister. He wondered how Kest fared. Would he and the others earn their first kill bans while he cowered with his sister behind castle walls? He could just make out the dark outline of two large ships at anchor in the harbour, as smaller boats transported his people from the shore, no doubt as slaves. Closer to the castle, men formed a shield wall across streets to bar the raiders' advance. Archers peppered the attackers with arrows, their flaming tips arcing through the night. What choice was slaughter or slavery? His fingers gripped the weapons, useless in his hands. His friends and warriors were out there and all he could do was watch. Maybe his father had it right. Maybe he was pathetic. Something tugged at his sleeve. He spun and stopped as Maya stared up at him with teary eyes, her lips trembling. It'll be fine. He sheathed his dagger and wrapped an arm around her. We'll be fine. What about father? He's down there right now, stopping the bad men from coming here. Will he win? Ragnar stroked her hair. He's a warrior, proud and true. Nothing will defeat him, he'll live. That's what they said about Mam, but she died. Finding nothing to say, Ragnar held his sister close. I'll be here for you, no matter what. Chapter 17 Warriors clashed with raiders in the courtyard below, the castle walls echoing with screams and grunts. Townsfolk retreated inside the outer bailey, huddling together with a ring of men surrounding them, 
defending them with anything they could lay their hands on, pitchforks, kitchen knives, forge hammers and wooden axes. Ragnar the Elder swung his warhammer while Olaf fought at his side with a sword and shield. The hammer struck a raider's skull, smashing it to pulp in the torchlight. Ragnar glanced back at his sister hiding beneath the furs, glad she could not see this side of her father, the warrior, the killer. Ulfred had more than once taught him the significance of the wolfsbane hammer, the symbol of the chieftain's power forged in blood and fire, from the purest raven glass. Worth more than gold and jewels, the hammer was as much a sign of the wolfsbane family as the wolf and spear standard. It was as much his birthright as the lands and the protection of its people, or at least, he hoped it was. His uncle's blade moved with a blur, gliding through the throat of a raider, while driving a second back with his shield, and into a swinging hammer, smashing a skull as if it were no more than an egg. Olaf's shield seemed to act on its own, blocking strikes intended for both him and his brother. Shouts and cries sounded from the corridor. Had the raiders breached the castle? Keep hidden, Maya. He leaned towards the chamber door and picked up footfalls and unfamiliar voices, the ring of steel on stone. For Wolfsbane! Ragnar started at the voice just outside his door, recognizing a member of his father's household guard. A deep groan resonated along the corridor, something heavy bashed against the door, forcing Ragnar back. He turned to his sister, his heart racing, his hands shaking. He pointed to his father's trunk. Hide in there. Maya shook her head. Fine. At least get under the bed then. And don't say a word. She crawled from beneath the furs and rolled under the bed. Stay there. Ragnar readied his sword and dagger. No matter what happens, stay there. The door thudded as if struck by a battering ram. Splinters flew, and a boot smashed through a gaping hole. A flailing hand reached through, grabbing for the bolt like an adder-seeking meat. Without thought, Ragnar swung his sword, severing the man's hand. With a scream, the arm retreated and sprayed blood through the hole. Ragnar stared at the hand on the floor, a dribble of blood and moon-white bone issuing from the stump. He let out a shuddering breath and tried to ignore the heaves in his stomach. The door opened. Chapter 18 A tall man covered in furs and boiled leather armor ducked through the door and peered at Ragnar through his helmet. Ragnar's breath caught at the sight of the raider's long-handled axe. Ragnar's breath caught at the sight of the raider's long-handled axe, its gleaming double head as large as one of the boy's training shields. Boys. The man looked past Ragnar, his accent thick and guttural. They use boys to gird the house. Ragnar shot forward and slashed his sword as a distraction, before driving his dagger into the man's thigh. The raider roared with pain and staggered forward, his huge axe slicing the air and missing. With eyes wide, he lumbered forward and brought the axe up for another strike. The axe sailed towards Ragnar. He hopped back and shifted his stance, overbalancing the raider when he tried to correct the axe's path. Its head smashed into the clothing trunk. Ragnar thanked creation Maya hadn't hidden there. He spun into the raider's guard and dipped his dagger into the man's side, sliding through his skin and muscle with surprising ease. The man stiffened and tried to pull away, but Ragnar pressed the dagger deeper, angling it upward, shredding the man from the inside. Warmth flowed over Ragnar's hand before the raider collapsed to his knees, blood spraying from his mouth in a pitiful gurgle. Ragnar dragged his dagger clear as a second figure filled the doorway, this one taller, wearing light armor and wielding a curved short sword. The raider stepped over the body of a household guard and met Ragnar's gaze. He charged forward, slashing his sword. Ragnar hopped back, knocking the sword aside with his own, and made a backhanded cut towards the man's belly. Dodging the swipe, the raider's free fist caught Ragnar's already bruised face. Shaking away the pain, he aimed his dagger at the man's eyes. It missed, but slashed the man's nose and cheek, drawing blood and peeling his flesh open. Screaming, the man clawed at his flapping cheek and back towards the door. Ragnar pressed his advantage, unwilling to let the man get away. The raider tried to fend Ragnar off, blocking his blows with his sword. Ragnar sliced a line from the man's right shoulder down to his left hip with his sword, forcing him to double over and expose his neck. Ragnar buried his dagger into his throat, tearing through the windpipe. In less than a heartbeat, the man slumped face first to the floor. Dead. Ragnar met the eyes of a pale man huddled into himself at the far end of the corridor, his severed hand leaving a stump of blood and bone. Without a word, Ragnar advanced on the man who tried to scramble away. 
This is what happens to those who try to take our home. He thrust the sword into his chest and pulled it free. Life evaporated from the man's eyes, snuffed out like a candle. The hallway stood quiet, save for his ragged breaths and thundering heart. He turned back to the chamber. Maya, are you all right? She appeared in the doorway and stared at the bodies. You should get back under the bed. We don't know if this is over. Chapter 19 Ragnar sat with his back against the wall and gazed at the dead men, his hands still gripping his blades, his fingers coated in drying blood. Ragnar. Where is Maya? He looked up at his father. Where is she? His father reached down and shook his shoulders. Where is Maya, boy? Where is your sister? Ragnar got to his feet and stepped over the bodies into his father's room. Maya. His voice came out in a dry croak. It's safe. Maya slid from under the bed and threw herself at her father, wrapping her arms around his legs. Father. She pulled away slightly. Ragnar killed all the bad men. Ragnar the Elder studied the bodies as if seeing them for the first time, and looked up at Ragnar. You killed these men. Ragnar nodded. His father pushed out his bottom lip. This is impressive, boy. Maybe you are a warrior, after all. He embraced Ragnar in a tight hug and slapped his back. You can train all you want, but the real measure of a warrior comes when he faces a true foe. He prodded Ragnar's chest. You're a Wolfsbane boy. You're a warrior proud and true. His gaze drifted to the sword and dagger still in Ragnar's hands. With a sigh, his father plucked the dagger from his grip, leaving him with the sword. I won't tell anyone you fought like one of those women. He squeezed Ragnar's shoulder. You kept your sister safe. A smile split his bloody beard. I'm proud of you, son. Ragnar licked his lips. Thank you. My lord, a guard called from the hallway. Ragnar followed his father along the corridor and stopped by a door. One of them is in there, the guard said. Maybe we can question him. Ragnar the Elder nodded and gestured for his son to open the door. With a nod, Ragnar turned the handle and held his sword ready. It's over. Your raid has failed. Come out. His father narrowed his eyes. Show yourself. The hanging drapes shifted, but no one emerged. Ragnar reached inside and dragged the sheets down, revealing a young man cowering in the corner. Sven? Sven crawled out on his knees and reached up to Ragnar the Elder. Please, forgive me, my lord, there were too many of them. My son killed three alone. And you cowered in a cupboard? What would have happened if they had killed Ragnar and taken my daughter? He ran a hand down his beard, his lip curling. I should kill you where you stand. He turned to face his guards. Take him from my sight, I want him gone from Mirand by sunrise. No! Two guards twisted Sven's arms behind him and dragged him away. Ragnar sagged with exhaustion as the fight seemed to evaporate from his bones. What should I do? Go back to your room. His father raised his chin. I will clean up here. Ragnar made a quick bow. Thank you, father. Thank you, son. Chapter 20 You're alive then? Ragnar flopped onto his bed and rolled his eyes at Kest. Yeah. You hear about Sven? Yeah, I was the one who found him. Kest laughed. Always said he was a massive asshole. Didn't have him figured for a coward. Ragnar let out a long yawn. Your family all right, though? Yeah, we were lucky. It's going to take a while to rebuild. Kest let out a sigh and rolled onto his side. I can't believe you killed three of them. What else could I do? Kest snorted. You could hide in a cupboard and hope no one finds you. Ragnar laughed. I'll have to try that next time. But for now, I need to sleep. Night, Rag. I'm glad you didn't die. Thanks. You too. Chapter 21 Seated between his father and uncle in the mead hall, Ragnar opened his eyes when Ulfred read the final names of the dead. So many brave men and women returned to creation. Ragnar the Elder got to his feet when Ulfred sat. We have paid a great price, but we live. Those who have lost houses will have homes in these walls until we can rebuild. He gestured for Ragnar to stand. My son cut his teeth as a warrior. He pulled Ragnar close to him and placed a hand around his shoulder. My son and your future chieftain made his first kill. Cheers erupted through the hall. 
Ragnar's father waved them silent. And his second. And his third. The cheers rose again, and Ragnar could not help smiling. He killed three men, three warriors set on taking Maya. He protected his sister. He protected his home. And he protected us all. He faced Olaf. Do you have them? Yes, brother. Olaf stood before Ragnar and slipped three silver bands, no thicker than twine, up onto Ragnar's left forearm. These bands represent your kills. They represent your prowess as a warrior. He clapped a hand down on Ragnar's shoulder, his own kill bands jangling. I always knew you had it in you, boy. He leaned forward, his voice dropping to a whisper. Just don't let it go to your head. He smiled and stepped back. Thank you, uncle. Ragnar returned to his seat as his father handed out more bands to the other warriors. Ragnar smiled to himself. Finally, his father was proud. The end. Thanks for listening. Subscribe now so you don't miss out on future stories. To find out more about John Cronshaw and claim your free star.